Japan hosts the fifth round of the 2015 Asia Pacific Rally Championship. And as always, a new country presents a new challenge. The roads used by Rally Hokkaido are very fast, but also very narrow and characterised by the dense vegetation that lines the tracks, hiding hazards and making good pace notes essential. Hokkaido is Japan's northernmost island, and the event's based in the city of Obihiro, while most of the rally action is closer to the town of Rikibetsu. And it's a complete contrast to the last APRC event in Malaysia, where it was spectacularly hot and humid, and the rally route comprised rough, narrow tracks through the palm oil plantations. Sweden's Pontus Tiedemand won the Malaysian rally and now has a healthy lead in the championship points, ahead of his MRF teammate Gaurav Gill from India. After two podium finishes earlier in the season and then a stage one crash in Malaysia, New Zealander Mike Young and the Japan-based Cusco Easy racing team have arrived early in Hokkaido to repair the car and carry out two days of extensive testing to prepare for an event where a good setup is very important. Cusco have uh, put a brand new engine, new gearbox and replaced the suspension so it's almost had a, a really big birthday and we only did 60 k's in Malaysia so it's basically a brand new car at the moment. And uh, weather could play a bit of a part in uh, proceedings, I think. Yeah, that's the talk of the town at the moment. That it's going to rain um, tomorrow quite a bit, so it could be quite interesting. I haven't really driven here in the wet, and there's a little bit dirt in some places, so I think it could be quite slippery. After a great result for Chinese driver Fan Fan in Malaysia, the One New Rally team is also keen to be getting some testing for its new Chinese-built Mitsubishi Lancers. It's especially important for its new recruit, Swedish driver Patrick Sandell, who has extensive experience in rallycross and the WRC, but hasn't rallied in Japan before. Yeah, no, it's the first time here. Uh, we have done the recce and the stages look really nice. They're very fast, kind of narrow, and, and, and I have a pretty big car, but I'm going to try to do the best to, to do a good result here. Can you tell us a little bit about, about the car? It's a new one, by the sound of it. Yeah, it's... Uh, 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 it's a Mitsubishi, it's uh, in a new regulation, uh, so it's very powerful, I have a lot of power, paddle shifting, so it's like a video game, uh, it's a little bit heavy in braking, uh, that's the only downside of it, but it's, it's a really nice car. Team MRF Skoda opts not to test at all, relying instead on last year's data. Its driver's first appearance at the event is Shakedown, where they immediately set the pace. The team has dominated the championship so far this season, even though for series leader Tiedemann, every event is a new one. No, it's the first time and no test before, so it will be a good challenge, but it's like in every event it's completely new, so it's good training for me. And we may even have a bit of uh, the weather play its part as well. Yeah, I think for the first run maybe some slippy place, but for sure if it's a train it will get much more rough uh, for, the, for the second pass, so... In, it can be hard, yeah. Tiedemann is aware that teammate Gill is likely to be a really big challenge here. <laughs> it's always go quick, and especially when he knows the road, it's bloody quick, so um, you never know. <laughs> I think he really want to have one victory now after two events without victory, so he will push, I think. He's hungry. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Gill is 43 points behind Tiedemann, but his championship chances are still very much alive if he can get a good result here in Japan. Yeah, I mean, we were second in the championship, so our aim is to get as many points as possible and see what, uh, how close we can get uh, to our teammate and uh, hopefully get maximum points uh, and then maybe battle it out in China. It's an event that's uh, worth having the experience, though, isn't it? So you, you should be able to keep ahead of front Pontus, do you think? Um, yeah, maybe, you know, he's quite fast and it's, uh, and the roads are quite clean this year compared to what it's been all these years, you know, there's a lot less vegetation, so it's all open and you can see most of the corners, so it's obviously going to be a little uh, easy uh, for him also to understand the roads, it's, and it's very fast, which is interesting. While Guild's second in the main championship, he does currently lead the Asia Cup points, with China's Fan Fan ten points behind him in second place. 
Just three points behind in third is Atoshi Takayama, who's hoping for some hometown advantage here in Hokkaido. Uh, Malaysia is my first time to APRC, so this is the second time. So I more, <laughs> more push and uh, my team member uh, is try hard, so I'm looking forward to get a high prize, yes. Looking for better luck here is Sri Lankan driver Dinesh Dihiragoda, who retired in Malaysia when his Mitsubishi's alternator belt broke on the last day. Uh, the recce was fine, shakedown was fine. The, the big uh, challenge is tomorrow and the day after on Sunday. So looking forward for it, uh, car is in good shape. Uh, recce notes, we are confident, uh, we have more confidence from last year on the recce notes. So I believe that uh, we would be faster, uh, I mean, in the stage times this year. There's a big field of local competitors entered in the International Rally of Hokkaido. All contenders for the Asia Pacific's Worth Cup points and prizes. Atsushi Masumura competed in the Australian round of the APRC and already has Worth Cup points to his name. Fuyuhiko Takahashi competed in Australia too and after crashing out twice will be looking forward to putting things right on his home event. The rain starts to fall during the rally show. However, it doesn't seem to deter the enthusiastic local rally fans, who every year turn out in their thousands to welcome all the competitors. <laughs> By the time the very elaborate start ceremony gets underway, heavy rain is falling. It seems the weather forecasters have unfortunately got it right this time, and their prediction is for heavy rain in the next 24 hours. The first stage, Satsunai River, is only a kilometre long, and most of that is straight. It's purely there for the spectators. <laughs> Tiedemann wins it by 0.8 of a second. Gill is second, but is one of many to hit a huge hole near the finish. Uh, it's rough on the braking, isn't it? Young is another. He's fourth but bends the suspension arm and damages the brand new front spoiler. Join us after the break for 141 kilometres of some of the wettest and most slippery roads of the APRC season. The next morning it's a six o'clock start on Rally Hokkaido and as Tiedemann begins stage two, Rikabetsu, the roads are looking very wet and slippery after heavy overnight rain. The first part of the stage is very fast tarmac. Then it goes on to gravel winding its way through a small forest park. It's an easy win for Tiedemann because behind him there's drama already. Take the notes, breaking to two minus left long. Gill has started the stage only to find he has a strange handling problem. Yeah, yeah. the crest keep left. Just front wheel drive. Yeah, four right. Mid stage, and Gill's obviously in big He's trouble, right scrabbling right for minus. grip. I don't think we'll get, huh? I don't know, we'll get through the next stages. Yeah. It's a very late two no left. Point driving like this. Nah, dangerous. With three-wheel drive, the Skoda's handling is totally unpredictable. And near the finish, Gill goes off course. While he does make it to the finish line, there's no other option but to retire. Gill and co-driver Glenn McNeil's season is over. Any chance of challenging Tiedemann now gone. Yeah, it's pretty disappointing to uh, go out that early. It's just a drive shaft issue and... 85k loop here, so it's, it's a bit dangerous to try and keep going. With Gill out, Young slots into second place in his Cusco Easy Racing Subaru. However, his position is immediately under attack from Atoshi Takayama, also driving a Group N Subaru. On stage three, Takayama is 16 seconds faster than Young, taking over second place with an 11 second buffer. 
Unfortunately, Takiyama doesn't hold the position long. On Kaniwa, the very next stage, he hits a big rock and punctures a tyre. Changing it costs him over six minutes and he falls from second to 11th. Sandel is another to post a string of top three stage times. But after stage three, he's demoted to 15th overall with a four minute and 40 second time penalty for his service crew arriving late at a refueling point. Unfortunately, it goes from bad to worse for the Swedish driver. He's forced to retire after stage four with suspension problems. Yeah, something happened uh, with the left front there. So uh, the car felt funny in the end of the stage. Uh, it didn't really respond to my steering. So yeah, something broke, obviously. So that's bad. It was two really nice stages, though. Very, very fast. And with this weather, the conditions are crazy. But I, I really enjoyed it. So hopefully we can get back out tomorrow. Sandel's team boss, Fan Fan, is not having a great event either. The Chinese driver incurring a similar time penalty for the delay at refueling. Another having issues at refueling is Young. His Subaru refuses to restart, and the time loss locating the fault costs the Kiwi 3 minutes and 40 seconds in road penalties, dropping him back to fourth overall at the end of stage five. With all the drama for the internationals, it's local driver Atsushi Masamura who moves his Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 10 into second place, four minutes behind Tiedemann. Two minutes further back, in third, is countryman Fuyuhiko Takahashi in the RST Rally Team Subaru, a man seemingly unfazed by the slippery conditions. By the lunchtime service break, Takayama, second fastest on both stage five and six, has got himself back up to eighth place. Sri Lankan driver Dehiragoda makes it to midday service at Rikabetsu in 14th place. The pouring rain continues and many have found it a challenging morning. For sure it's a lot of rain and uh... As first car on the road, it's a lot of standing water, so it's really tricky to drive. Uh, but the weather is very, very bad, and the course is very slippery. Yes. Ah, my driving is very dangerous. <laughs> yeah, today is very wet, and my car is a bit twisty, and then I'm driving bad, but but today is enjoy it. Yes. yes. Uh, good first three stages, but after refuel, um, the car wouldn't start, and so we're late, 22 minutes, and. There's a lot of fuses in the car to check and we're a bit late, maybe three minutes and 40 seconds late time, but at least we're still in the rally. There were a few moments which I thought was the rally was over, but uh, we are still here. But we have a very high evening. I hope we will continue to work in OK, thank you. Service is followed by a third pass over the Rikabetsu stage in treacherous conditions. Tiedemann stretches his lead further to almost five minutes. It's another easy win on stage eight. But then on stage nine, the rain comes down even harder and it's virtually impossible to see the road. There's no point in pushing and in these conditions, Tiedemann decides to slow. It's the only stage he doesn't win all day. Young is fastest here. Running 12 cars back in the field after being delayed earlier in the day, he's on a charge to regain second place. Stage nine is the end of the road for Asia Cup contender Fan Fan. He retires his Mitsubishi with mechanical problems. But it's a much better stage for De Hiragoda, who jumps up from 14th to 11th. In the mid-pack, there's a great battle going on for 8th, 9th and 10th places between three Japanese drivers. Mitsuhiro Aoki in the Emmons Motorsport Mitsubishi finishes the day eight seconds behind Wataru Aono in the Brains Trust Mitsubishi. 
Tominori Nasu is holding on to eighth place by just six seconds at the end of the day. Over two minutes and 20 seconds ahead is Hiroshi Hoshino, who's doing a good job in the Subaru run by the very enthusiastic Takayama College rally team. Perhaps even more impressively, Takahiro Yoshi, driving an older spec Mitsubishi Evo 9, is in sixth. Subaru driver Takahashi puts in a valiant effort to stave off the hard-charging Takayama, but in the closing stages, he drops to fifth place. Takayama has made an amazing recovery. Fighting his way back from 11th place and nine and a half minutes behind the leaders after stage four, the Japanese driver is attacked on every stage in the afternoon. His effort hoists him back into fourth place, eight seconds ahead of Takahashi. A great effort on a very challenging day's rally. My Pontas and me are uh, uh, very so score and uh, uh, many uh, la lake, lake, oh, paddle, <laughs> paddle, paddle. Uh, basha, basha, uh, so, and slightly go. <laughs> yeah. Takayama and Young are battling for honours in Asia Cup, and at the end of day one, Young is three and a half minutes ahead, sitting third overall and just 17 seconds behind second placed Masamura. The Cusco mechanics use the extra long service brake at the end of day to give the Subaru a big clean up. There's so much water in a car, it's like a tsunami, and the dash is falling apart since we took it all apart to try to get at all the fuses. And even the, the sun visor and the mirror all, you know, we're in our laps at one point, so it's, it's been a testing day. So. Masamura has had an amazing day fast enough to hold second overall and steady enough to stay out of trouble. Second roof is very difficult. Um, uh, my driving is very, very carefully. Uh, very tired. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ca car OK? Yes. No, a little bit. I have a little bit of trouble. Uh, but yeah, nothing. Uh, I'm very careful driving now. Tiedemann has a massive eight-minute lead margin by the end of the day when he lets us into some secrets on how to drive in such extremely wet conditions. You need really to look after where you're driving and where the, all the standing water is and so on and need to understand what will happen, behaviour of the car when you hit this, all this water splash and standing water, so um, it's, it's not easy, but uh, yeah, I like it, yeah. I don't know about the weather tomorrow, but it's for sure it will maybe not be easy tomorrow also, so, but we continue like this, maybe try to push a little bit more if it's better conditions, so I really like the road here. Join us after the service break for all the day two action. The next morning at Rally Hokkaido, while it's another early start and there's a lot of fog about, at least the rain has stopped. So the battle resumes for the main contenders, with Sandel joining them, restarting to get some more development miles in the one new Mitsubishi. Young takes 13 seconds off the gap to Masamura on the first stage of the day. Then moves up to second place on stage 13, Ikeda, a new and very fast all-tarmac test. The new Honbetsu stage 14 is very wide and very fast, an ideal stage for Tiedemann to really put the foot down and enjoy the drying roads. It's also a good stage for Sandel to show off the power of the new one new Mitsubishi. He's second fastest on this test. 
There's drama, though, for De Hirigoda. The water pump in his Mitsubishi ceasing to function and forcing him to drive slowly through the rest of the stage to get it back to service. Takayama continues his push, trying to catch Masamura. At the morning restart, he was nearly four minutes behind, but by the end of the loop, he's chopped that in half. However, Masamura is managing the gap and keeping to his promise of steady driving. De Herigoda does make it back to lunchtime service, where, in the true spirit of rallying, the Race Talk team pitches in to help replace the Mitsubishi's water pump. Looks like the Race Talk boys are rebuilding the car for you with the engine. I think we have a quite a good relationship and understanding. I mean, I, I guess that is the case with the whole service park. Like, you know, we help each other uh, in material, like, you know, irrespective of which team or whatever. When the help is needed, we come as one team and then help. Just 35 kilometres remain before the finish, and with the roads drying, it's an easy run for Tiedemann, who just keeps pulling away from the rest of the field. He slows slightly towards the finish, only second fastest on the last stage, but by then he has a lead of 12 minutes. There are big celebrations back at final service as he and co-driver Emil Axelson not only celebrate a comprehensive rally victory, but have also won the FIA Drivers' and Co-Drivers' Championship, the Manufacturers' Championship, the Team's Trophy and the Worth Cup. For me it's been a good, good season here in, uh, so far in, uh, in the APRC. It's, it's a shame for Jill that he's had some problems. It's better if you can have some good battles, but um, yeah, that's motorsport. So, so, but for sure, it's it's good title to have on your uh, CV. So, really happy of this. Yeah, yeah, I really enjoyed the day today. Going, pushing a little bit, and car and the tires working perfect, and Emil is reading good, and good pace notes. So, today I really enjoy. Young has one small scare on SS17 Nikita. The second pass over the all tarmac stage has some very slippery and muddy corners, and the Kiwi has a slow off. There's no damage though, and he's able to cruise the last stages, sitting comfortably in second and winning the Asia Cup category. I suppose this weekend was about finishing and bringing the car home, and we stuck to the plan and, and did just that to reset after the crash in Malaysia. So I'm really happy, and it's been quite an adventure this weekend. A lot of things have, little things have gone wrong or things that have been testing us, but we've managed to get to the finish. Masamura holds on to his third place, finishing 33 seconds in front of Takayama and ready to celebrate his best international result to date. This today is very, very happy. Thank you for Australia friend and uh, Japanese friend. Takayama is second fastest driver for day two, but still hasn't been able to catch Masamura. It's a good result though by finishing fourth overall and combining his points from Malaysia, Takayama now leads the Asia Cup points. Many things happen, but I managed to uh, carry the car to this service park. I'm very happy. The final results show Tiedemann winning by a massive margin, while further back, Takahashi and Yoshi are separated at the finish by a mere 3.6 seconds. De Herigoda holds on to finish 13th overall and third in the Asia Cup. It's enough to propel him into fourth equal with Fan Fan, who didn't finish this event. Tiedemann's win means he's now unbeatable in the Worth Cup points. Gill holding on to second, but Young just 20 points away now. The top three crews receive their awards on the podium after what has arguably been one of the most challenging events of the championship so far. And before we wrap up the coverage from Hokkaido, APRC President Stephen Kennedy congratulates the organisers on a great event. Uh, they say it's their 14th year at running APRC and we're proud to be able to say that it's probably one of the very best events in the calendar. Fantastically organised, I mean huge crowds, everything about it just is exactly what we'd want a showcase of, of rally to be.
Equally happy is Michael Lofland, CEO for Worth Japan. We are here now the third year and uh, it's growing every year and uh, we have customers coming every year, bringing their friends the next year and it's, uh, it's a really great event.